Welcome back everyone. Following what might have been the worst late game call in the entire NBA this season, there definitely needs to be change moving forward. And I'm really referring to two things here, one of which obviously being the NBA officiating, and then the other being a change within the Lakers rotation. We will talk about both of them in today's video. And if you have been enjoying the content here on my channel, then be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and hit that notification bell to never miss out when I upload a video. Without further ado though, let's dive right into it. And we'll begin by briefly going over the awful officiating. Now, I usually don't like to dwell on blown calls, but this one was pretty bad. And then when you combine it with the other blown calls that have happened lately as well, it really becomes a bit irritating. We had the two blown calls against the Dallas Mavericks, one of them against Joel Embiid in Philadelphia, a four point play against Sacramento, and then the worst one that occurred last night, all of which had dramatic effects on the outcome of each game. And while you can argue about whether or not the first three decided the actual outcome, or how blatant the missed call actually was, no one can deny the impact from the call against Boston. I mean, sure, LeBron still would have had to make at least one free throw, but the foul itself was completely obvious, and given that they are giving those foul calls to Boston, even leading all the way up to the play right before that one, there is no reason for them not to make that call. The free throw shooting made a big difference in this game, and specifically with how many free throws each team was given. If we take a look at the Celtics, they shot 39 total free throws, and then made 34 of them, but then when we take a look at the Lakers, they were given only 20 total free throws. And while that might not really mean anything on the surface level alone, it definitely does when you take a look at how many more times the Lakers drove to the rim. No matter what way you want to look at it though, the outcome of this game was dramatically affected by the officiating, leading all the way up to the final play of regulation. And in my opinion, it should be a talking point for change moving forward. Many fans have called for referees to begin getting fined, and even players have called for it too. I feel like we would be all for that, but I really doubt it happens. Getting financial penalties approved would be a long process that I really doubt would go anywhere. I mean, maybe it'll happen eventually, but it won't be anytime soon. Though another option could be making a mandatory press conference for NBA refs. That would appear to be a more immediate and realistic option. It would force them to at least come face to face with actual reporters and require them to give a live explanation for their in-game calls. Regardless though, the NBA needs to do something. The officiating problem is getting worse, not better, and it's pretty much to the point where players cannot even react to calls without facing punishment. With all of that being said though, the Lakers have to find a way to move on from this. They unfortunately have been heavily affected by it, but it won't do them any good to keep it in their mind. In addition to that, despite them playing quite well lately, they are still being affected by a number of lingering problems, many of which involve their rotation. I feel like a majority of fans have absolutely loved the addition of Rui Hachimura, but many of us have been surprised at how it affected their rotation. We thought it would help them become bigger, but Darvin M has found a way to continue playing their small ball lineups. And while it might not be as bad compared to before, he is still clinging on to their three guard lineups, even at the cost of removing both Wendy Gabriel and now even Max Christie from their rotation. And that to me is completely ridiculous. I mean, I understand that the addition of Hachimura, along with the return of Anthony Davis made Gabriel less of a priority, but that does not mean he should have been outright benched. He went from getting 20 to 25 minutes per game in the week prior to acquiring Hachimura, to then not even taking off his warmups, which I'm really having a hard time making sense of. He may not have been the most talented player within their rotation, but he very well could have been their hardest worker, and he always found a way to make an impact. You can't tell me he wouldn't provide them with a productive 10 minutes off the bench. He has already proved to be a great offensive rebounder, a hardworking player on defense, and then a great fit with Westbrook on offense. I mean, sure, he is great to have in case of an injury, or when they are playing against a smaller lineup, but that should not be the only time he plays moving forward. And the same thing goes for Max Christie, another guy who is outright benched during their game against Boston, and I really don't understand why. You might be able to make the argument for there not being enough playing time to go around for Gabriel, but you really cannot do that for Christie. 
Even with the addition of Hachimura, they remain very thin at small forward. And in reality, neither Hachimura nor LeBron are small forwards. They are both primarily power forwards, and that leaves them with Troy Brown alone if they bench Christie, which would definitely not be a good idea. Troy Brown has had good moments, but he is not reliable enough to fill a major role, and in my opinion, that role should be split between him and Christie. He may be shooting at a lower volume, but Christie has proven to be a much more efficient shooter than Troy Brown, and then he is probably better in regard to defense and rebounding too. I get that they are afraid to overwork him, or maybe do not quite trust him to fill a big role yet as a rookie, but there is absolutely no reason for them to outright bench him. Troy Brown has not proven to be significantly better than him, and neither have any other of their guards, who have also been getting playing time in favor of him. And despite both Patrick Beverly and Dennis Shooter playing incredibly well lately, they do not need to be playing over 30 minutes per game each, and especially with Westbrook getting roughly that many as well. It should really not be that difficult to find 10 to 15 minutes per game to give to Christie. He is shooting over 42% from three, has proven to be one of their most reliable catch and shoot players, and then has really been a great defender for them as well. And if you are having trouble finding playing time for a guy like that, then I'm really not sure what to tell you and especially if you are giving minutes to other players who are not providing anything more. Again, I understand that it's not particularly easy to find a perfect balance, but finding minutes for two players who have been very productive should not be that hard. And with Lonnie Walker now being back, along with Austin Reeves returning relatively soon as well, it will only be getting more difficult, and Darvin Ham needs to do a better job at it moving forward. To wrap everything up here though, there should definitely be a change with both the NBA officiating and the Lakers rotation moving forward. You can argue about what should be done about each of them, but I think we can all agree that a change needs to be made, and purely in regard to the Lakers rotation, they have the power to make that change. With all of that being said though, what do you guys think? What do you believe should be done with the NBA officiating, and then with the Lakers rotation moving forward? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.